Hey guys, welcome to the video. I'm Amy and I post three videos a week. I post a lot of three-day foundation wear tests, makeup first impressions, full face one brand, uh, monthly favorites, things like that. If that sounds like your kind of content, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out on mine. In today's video, I am very excited to be talking about Huda Beauty. I have never tried anything from Huda Beauty until today. And we tried out today the Faux Filter Skin Finish Buildable Foundation Stick. Um, I got the shade Vanilla 120B. And then I also picked up these little guys. I swatched these in this video. I did only use this one on my eyes today, um, but I did swatch both of them and discuss both of them. So let's go ahead. Um, if you wanna see how this stick foundation looks on my dry, dry skin, and uh, the swatches for these, then just keep watching. This is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Skin Finish Buildable Coverage Foundation Stick. I was torn between getting the reformulated liquid version versus this, but I read a few reviews and I saw that more dry skin people were liking the stick foundation. So I went with the stick foundation but I did use my Retin-A a few days ago, so I'm gonna just kind of around my nose and mouth area put some of my Smashbox primerizer. Um, since this isn't gonna be a three-day foundation wear test, it's just kind of a first impression. I don't feel bad about using a primer. Um, but I'm totally down to do a three-day foundation wear test. If you wanna see that, let me know. So. I've been, I have like a dry patch that's trying <laughs> to remove from my skin. I'm noting that beforehand in case, you know, I say that it looks terrible around my nose. I already know my nose looks terrible. So I normally like to use a foundation brush with foundation sticks. So I do have my sponge here just in case I want to use my sponge, but I have a brush here, which I will probably use. This is the e.l.f. foundation blurring brush. Again, this is the shade 120B. Focus, there we go. Isn't that cool? Anyways, so here is the shade 120B Vanilla. And then I'm gonna just kinda blend that out. That looks pretty nice. Okay, uh, I'll do one side at a time. How about that? I'm gonna do, let's see. I feel like I should do three for some reason, but I'll do like half here, half here, like this. Okay. So this is basically three stripes of it on my face. I would say that got me to like a uh, medium it looks a little bit heavy right here to me but i'm gonna build it up <laughs> anyway what does this say hold on i'm terrible at this guys natural finish finish buildable coverage and waterproof for light to medium coverage apply to face and buff out with your favorite sponge or brush repeat to build coverage as needed for full coverage swipe directly onto a brush and apply to face that's weird uh i'm gonna build it up i'm putting it like directly on my little spots and i guess i'll put some on my forehead I think the color is really good. I haven't blended like any down to my neck. So I think the color is really good. What do you guys think about the coverage? Do you think that's full coverage? Am I doing something wrong? I feel like it's like medium. I don't feel like it's really building. And I don't think it's a natural finish. Maybe I will try it with the sponge on the other side. Um, it feels pretty set down and pretty matte to me. It is, it does look terrible around my nose. But like we said, my nose looked terrible. Let's see if I can press it into this area. I'm gonna keep trying it because like I said, I did just 
recently used my Retin-A, so my skin is starting to peel. But it's not blowing me away, I'll tell you that. Um, let's go ahead and go on the other side. And I'm gonna just try to go with like a lot, okay? Because I really wanna see if we can get full coverage out of this. I mean, full coverage to me is like, I wanna look like a blank slate, you know what I mean? So maybe I just have not great expectations. So we're going to the sponge. All right, so sponge, brush. I definitely did get more up in here coverage, but that's because I have a hard time going there with a brush because my eye is so sensitive. So I would say ignore this area or like, let me use the sponge just to cover that area because I think that area lets you think there's more coverage. See, immediately, it looks it looks the same coverage, I think. I don't think one side gave me more than the other, really. But let's look at the finish, or like the way it looks on the skin. I don't know, it still looks kind of dry, clinging a little bit to my patches. Let's try spraying my face. I never do this, but let's try it. <laughs> it does feel so good. Uh, this is the Wet n Wild Photofocus Setting Spray. I'm gonna sneeze. And then let it dry down a little bit. I drenched my face. I know some people like, this is part of their routine, but like, there's a difference in I want to make the very best of my products. I want them to look the most beautiful. I want to do a hack to make it look better versus let me test this foundation. You know what I mean? Like, I think foundations should look good on their own. You shouldn't have to do a bunch of other stuff. They should look good, like a baseline of good. And everything else you do can make them look better, last longer, look dewier, things like that. It definitely looks so much better on my skin now. Like, so much better. I don't know, did it take the coverage away at all? I don't think it really did. I'm gonna go a little bit over this because I think I didn't cover my whole chin. You know, because I was like this side or this side. I always wanna cover this up, but it's a mole and it's 3D and it just doesn't cover. So I'm gonna use the sponge since it's all hydrated with that setting spray now. I think it looks so much better on my skin with the spray much more skin like, much less like, I looked kind of like powdery around my dry spotches, dry patches, <laughs> that was hard to say. But I think the color is, it's literally the color of my neck. Um, I think it looks great. So far, so good. Like, I would say so far for me, it's like a, like a six out of 10. But let's see how it wears, you know? Let's see what it looks like when it's all done. Uh, anyway, we've got two palettes. Okay, I couldn't just pick one. I've never tried Huda Beauty. I've always wanted to get the Mercury Retrograde palette. But then these ones were on sale and I was like, and I got them both and the packaging is so pretty. I love the like clear acrylic, but it's like, a color like this one's a little bit pink and this one's a little bit green you know so i got the nude light and it looks like that here hold on beautiful fun flirty light you can't even see the center shade because it is my skin tone but this one right here, this like yellow to pink flip is really calling my name for today. And this one right here looks like a color I would love for every day. Okay. And then I got the Khaki Haze. 
And it looks like this. Beautiful, deep, smoky, grungy. Oof. Yes. Feeling that, okay? Yeah. I think I'm gonna do a basic look with this, with that like bright pink with the flip, and we'll play with this one another day. See you later, bud. And I am going to go with that center shade that was basically my skin tone first and set that down just lightly with my next 16 all the way to the top. Let's go ahead and go into this pink shade. I don't know if they have shade names. If they do, the shade names are not on here. Yeah, no, it's just several languages of ingredients and where it's made. So I'm just going to go with the pale pink shade right here. Same NYX 16 brush. I'm pressing in nicely into my brush and really filling it up. And then I'm tapping into the mirror so that I can shove those particles into the brush nicely. And then tapping off the excess and it leaves me like this. All right, I'm going to take this BH number 17, which is a really tiny blender brush, into the same color, just testing out its, you know, buildability. See how, like, pale of a color it is? So even when I'm building it up, it's like a light color, if that makes sense. It's, like, lighter than my skin tone, maybe? It would probably look chalky on someone with a deeper skin tone. Which, I mean, they made different variations for different people. Okay, I'm gonna take the shade right here, which was, again, the like pink, I don't know if you can see, but it's like a pink with like, like a neon green yellow kind of color. It is like a thinner color, doesn't have a lot of base, or at least the base is so close to my skin tone that you don't see it very much. That's why I think it'd be like perfect for like an everyday look, you know? It's like a cool color, but it gives you an interesting little vibe. So I spread that up so that the glitter is up in my crease as well. It's like micro micro. So it looks like that. I don't know if you can tell. I think it looks really nice, really fun but not, it's something where if wearing colors and ridiculous shimmers and duochromes is a little bit out of your comfort zone and you really like like an everyday look, this is just a little bit quirky, a little bit funky, but still very, very wearable. Like I feel like this color would be really good or like this palette would be really good for like ethereal, enchanted, fairy kind of looks. But you don't have to go that far with it, you know? I'm going to take this NYX number 43. I'm going to go into this color. It's kind of like a terracotta shade just on the tip and kind of give myself a little bit of definition on the outer corner. Just a little bit. It is warmer, so it is going to look a little bit more contrasting. Then what I've got down. So we're just going outer corner, kind of on the lash line, and then a little right under. What do you think, what do you think? Quick and easy, little everyday, free shadow look. I think these are really easy to work with. I mean, I am working with some of the lightest shades, um, but so far I feel like the formula of the shadow is very easy to work with. I'm not seeing a lot of fallout or uh, over pigmentation to where when you lay down the color it gets stuck there. They're very blendable and, and working really well and easily for me. 
All right, I'm gonna go off camera, put on some mascara, some brow, maybe a lip product, and then I will zoom out and we'll talk about the products a little bit. I am satisfied with this finished look. Overall, I'm not mad at it. I think it looks really good. It is more coverage than I go for normally, like in an everyday situation, a more of a high medium um, coverage where I'm more like sheer to light coverage most days. Um, so I think it looks really good and like skin-like, especially since we've sprayed it. I don't know if it would have gotten here on its own, but I do like it the way that it is now. And I did not set it, but I did use powder products. I set a little bit in my T-zone um, and it does have a nice like natural kind of finish to it. My nose does look terrible. What, like I said, we're gonna ignore the nose. Um, I think it looks nice. I don't think like, like when I put on my Makeup Forever Ultra HD stick, I'm like, oh, man, something about this is beautiful. I don't get that vibe, but I do really like it. I think it looks really nice. I'm excited to see how it wears. Um, the eyeshadow palettes. I, I really like this one. This is for fair pale people though. I wouldn't say if you have a medium skin tone, if you have even like a slightly tan skin tone, I don't think you would get much out of this. Um, even though I do think like the vibe of this one is more of that like iridescent fairy situation where the other two are much more of like a, like the medium, medium one I think is what it's called, is more like a berry rosy type vibe. Um, and the darker one is in that realm. Those feel more nude to me than this one. Um, I think maybe just because of these two colors right here, the color that I used on my lid and this purple color are a bit more, you know, fantasy type vibe. So if you liked that vibe, I don't think this would be for you unless you were pale enough for it. Um, so just keep that in mind. But I'm really happy with the colors. I didn't use anything too deep, but I didn't get any fallout with the colors that I did use. Um, so that's good. And it's really a nice and smooth formula. And I think it was really easy to work with. I definitely will have a better thought overall of the eyeshadows from the brand once I try this one because these are such deep, rich colors. So that will tell me more about the shadows, whereas these colors are a little bit more easy to create. Um, so I don't wanna base the entire brand off of just the colors that I use today. But so far, so good. I am really excited to dig into this. Um, let me know if you wanna see that on my channel. I might try it tomorrow not filming, you know? But let me know if you wanna see it on my channel and I will definitely use it on my channel. But so far, so good. So this right now, I would say it, it's moved up to like a 7.5. Like, I'm liking it more. I'm liking it. Like, as I look at it, I'm like, mm, maybe it's an eight. <sighs> okay, I don't know if it's a 10. I don't think it'll go to a 10, but it might settle itself at, at an eight. So, so far, so good. I like the color. I love a stick foundation. And these, I'm really excited about this one, and I really enjoyed this one. But like I said, it is a little bit more pale friendly than what I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be more along the lines of like, um, the coconut one from ColourPop, but a little bit more pink. But that one definitely has more depth to it than this one. This one is fair people friendly. If you are my skin tone or lighter, that one. But yeah, that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me out so much. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. <laughs>